Today I'm joined once again by the excellent Christian Dunlan. <laughs> excellent may not be uh, accurate, we should probably put in that. Well, uh, we'll, we'll see depending on what you think of uh, the game we're about <laughs> oh to talk goodness. about, which is Sid Meier's Starships. And interestingly and excitingly, it's not just Sid Meier in name, it, he led the design on this game. Yeah, right? yeah. So one of the things you hear about Firaxis, Sid Meier's um, developer, is that they have Civ going on and they have XCOM going on and these are all led by separate people so yes. XCOM is Jake Solomon but Big Sid himself which, can we refer Sid. to him as Big Sid is that, is that I okay? I think he would probably hate that <laughs> I know right <laughs> my understanding is they always have a Sid project which is a project which so uh, Firax is kind of invented the idea of the designer who is also a programmer in, in the modern sense, right. in the modern kind of, I mean, in the old days, it was always the case, but they've kept it alive. So yeah, it's a proper Sid, it's a Sid Meier joint. Basically that lets me do whatever I want to do. Civilization Beyond Earth, this ties into quite yeah. heavily, right? Was it, was it Sid Meier's Civilization Beyond Earth? I think, I think it, it was. was, I think, because I think on Steam, I think it's it's there with all the other Sid. If you are on Steam, you will have a little Sid Meier's um, area in your, right, in your sure. library yeah, and yeah. I think it's in there. And th this is part of that same universe even uh, if it looks to be quite a different game. Yeah, it, it loosely follows, continues the story of Beyond Earth but I think it has very little mechanic. The story of Beyond Earth, as far as I'm aware, I love the opening cutscene, but isn't it pretty much Earth is looking a bit rubbish, so we're going to send some people out to well, find I'm very, somewhere I'm else very, to live? I'm very glad you asked. Beyond Earth is about humanity colonizing a new homeworld, yep. much like Alpha Centauri was. Uh, Starships begins essentially where Beyond Earth ends, though it doesn't actually, I don't think it follows any of the particular endings. So no yeah, I don't think it would make sense if it no, did. There was, I thought there was an ending where you reconnected with other colonists on different planets, but there's not. I went and looked back mm. today and there isn't. But that's the idea. So your colony is set up on your home world and you receive message from other humanity, other, um, other members of the human race spread throughout the stars. If Beyond Earth was focused on one planet, Starships takes in a whole galaxy, okay. essentially. So it, it uses that connection for the setting, and that, that's that's yeah. pretty much it, right? Well, I mean, like, so the opening screen, you pick an affinity, and they're the same three affinities Harmony, as... Harmony, purity, and supremacy, right? Supremacy, that's right, and I, I could never remember them. In Beyond Earth, the affinity was quite a big decision that you were making throughout the entire course of the game. Whereas here, it's very much what do you want to, what perks do you want to start off with? So it could be, it could be anything. Okay, so uh, this is this game's being released on the on PC, Mac, and iPad, right? Yes. Which which made you worries furious. me a little bit because <laughs> well, looking at the gameplay itself, it does look like a game that's been designed with an iOS device in mind rather than. See, I, I've there. only played it on PC, and it feels like a PC. Game. Okay. If you look at their games philosophically, they 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 don't do real time strategies, so they don't do the kind of games which are actions per second. Sure. And he talks about this a lot. He will always say that they want to engage the brain rather than the fingers, which is such a wonderful line, such a classic, <laughs> classic Sid. And I think that translates very well to different platforms because there are not a lot of moments in Starships. Starships is turn-based. There aren't a lot of moments where you, you have to do something frantically mm -hmm. in just the right second. In fact, there are no moments where you have to do that. So it works, it works very well. That definitely makes the, for an easier transition it, to a, a touch device. It is more of, I would say, I've been trying to think how I'd express it. it is, it's certainly a breezier game than Beyond Earth. Mm -hmm. So I mean, like, Beyond Earth is a pretty hardcore PC game. It's a pretty hardcore strategy game. From from just looking at the gameplay, it does look quite minimalist by comparison. So right? this is this is it's really interesting. I'll tell you about the game. So the the object of the game that you can still do the uh, domination, the science victories, and all those other things. But the main thrust of the game is that you want to own fifty one percent of the galactic map. Right. And you do this by going to planets and basically influencing them until they become part of your federation. And the way you do this, so so the overarching game is strategic. You have the galactic map and you're competing with other civs mm -hmm. to, to own 51% of it. And, you know, you can be trying to influence a planet at the same time someone else is, and it's who gets all four bars filled up quicker owns it and then you can actually go back in and try and fight people and defeat them and take over sure. if they own them. Whenever you go to a planet though it becomes a turn-based battle game played out on a 2D, uh, it's 3D but on a 2D plane on mm -hmm. hex, it's hexes are back which is always lovely to see and you, there are various different missions. There are like just defeat all the baddies. There are like survive for five turns. There are escort missions which are surprisingly non-terrible, which right. is a real. Okay. And and they all take place in space around these planets, but they use asteroids. A very uh, asteroids will block shots or will mm -hmm. diminish the power of shots. And in some environments, asteroids create paths 
oh, at certain periods and then close them back up again as they kind of That sounds like a, a sensible way of making a, a map that works with gameplay in mind yeah, in space, it's, which definitely. is usually quite open, right? And, yeah, <laughs> and it reminds me of At the Gates as well, which is um, Schaefer, John Schaefer, an, a, a Firaxis alumni. And that kind of dynamic map seems to be quite cool at the moment, and it really works beautifully here because you can... You can be in your starship, you can nip through a gap, and then it can close behind you, and you can be like, haha, I'm safe, or, oh, I'm screwed. The least fleshed out part of this game, which is really strange given the title, is the starships themselves. Because I was under the impression that the customization of those starships was one of the, the leading aspects of well, it, at least it, hearing the, them talk. From the bit I've played, it, it's fun, certainly, so you, you pay money to like add bits to your starship. Mm -hmm. But I had in mind a bit where I'd be almost like involved in the design, like clamping bits on in certain areas and like making a starship which looked the way I wanted it, which yeah. would be a disaster because I'm terrible at design. <laughs> but that's not the case. It's more like you go, well, I want to put more into shields and then the, the, the model is updated in front of you. I want to put more into engines and you see the extra, extra engines or the extra guns. So it, it feels a bit distance from that, that part. But maybe that part just wouldn't really sit in the game. It would be a bit like Spore where, you know, you're playing this tactical game but then every so often you have to become an art editor yeah, and sure. it maybe just wouldn't work. What is annoying, and it's a tiny thing that it has, but it has a huge, more important than it should be, right. is you can't rename your starships. Oh, man, that seems really odd. I know. Especially and, coming from Firaxis, and I who, wonder, who understand the... I wonder, I mean, uh, XCOM. Yeah. XCOM, how... XCOM XCOM's is a different great. game if you can't name the soldiers, I think. Yeah, XCOM would be diminished if you couldn't name the soldiers after local takeaway should, restaurants I wanna, or whatever. I want to name my, my ship after stuff to do with Battlestar. No, like, of course you do. And I wonder if they religious. will... I imagine if we start an online petition yeah. right now, <laughs> they them. will... Add that in. I wonder if it was if that was one of the only concessions to it being an iPad thing, because suddenly you've got to bring out that, that keyboard, which I hate. The fat fingered think, people like me. That, that, I wonder if the that's the case, but it does seem like an omission, which is sort of like on the surface of it makes no difference at all. But on an emotional level, and Sid Meier game, like Firaxis games, are brilliant for being strategic, tactical games, which always manage to get you on an emotional. Level. Yeah, definitely. It seems quite an odd omission. But generally speaking, it feels like. It does feel like a PC game. You played it on the PC. It doesn't feel like. Yeah, it feels. It feels it's like it's lost a, too much along it, the way. It feels like I think it's like ten dollars or something like that, and it feels like a ten dollar PC game. And I mean that like it's it's not Civ. It's not a grand strategy experience. It is. It, it feels like a, a the way it feels like an iPad game is you can kind of go. I can imagine diving in and out of this. Okay. I think this is a PC game yeah, where well, you play. A game will take you an afternoon rather than a Civ game, which can take you like a weekend. Sure. We were talking about this recently. I think the the last Sid project I can think of is Ace Patrol, his dogfighting game. This is certainly more complex than Ace Patrol, but right. it has that same mentality of like here is a light-hearted romp of a game, rather than yeah going full, full Civ, strategy. Civ Five with a bunch of different Civs and with I don't know you're going for a culture victory and you're playing as Brazil. That's not a romp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're quite pretty invested in that. Okay, well that that sounds good. It's it's worth checking out for. It's still the same audience, though, right? It's still Civ fans that are gonna want to. Oh yeah, I think if if you were, I actually think this has got like the potential of being like a gateway into strategy because everything is so. I think the thing about Sid Meier, which is really special and which he has retained through all these years, is a kind of clarity and a directness. And his games are just really, uh, they they really make sense immediately and they draw you in really quickly and they make complex they make their complexities seem accessible, and it totally has that. I think this is a lot of fun. I th I th certainly, like I, there was a lot of um, I mean, ahhing about it. About like people in the office were not sure it was going to be for them, and I think it's. It, I really like it. All right, cool. Well, that's relieving to hear because I think I was one of those people. Yeah, well, I'm not. I, like, I mean, like you have to know what you're getting. Yeah, like, you're not getting Civ Six. Mm -hmm. You're getting a, you know a game developed by a smaller team with a smaller budget in mind. And and with a with a smaller ambition in a sense, not in a bad sense. Yeah, just like they, sure. they know it's it's a bit of fun, but it's a, it's a good bit of fun. Really like it. Cool. Well, your review is going live on Friday. I don't actually know what day this video is going up. No, so. my review is going live on Thursday. Thursday. Okay. But I haven't. It's Wednesday afternoon. I haven't written it yet. So right. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll let you get back to that. Thank you so much.